Good morning, everyone. Um, we are uh, Ruben Ross and Ali Lasse, and uh, we are both uh, PhD candidates at Leiden University. And uh, today we're going to talk about the innovators of the past. And um, uh, DH has given us uh, quite a lot of methods to quantify historical change in historical uh, corpora, uh, word frequencies, topic models, word embeddings. And um, in the last couple of years, uh, people have been uh, using methods from information theory to study historical change at a more general level. Um, uh, and uh, uh, this method called novelty is based on entropy and it basically looks at how innovative uh, a text or a period or whatever is compared to the past and uh, as such you can sort of calculate the novelty of a text and um, this method is great because you can uh, sort of assess historical change at a more general level uh, uh, which also touches upon uh, questions of periodization um, so we are both using this method in our research which is completely unrelated, uh, but we both use this method. And um, uh, we are also both interested in sort of tying this method back to the level of individual historical actors. And uh, that is what we'll be talking uh, about today. So we uh, have two test cases, our uh, data sets for our dissertations, uh, two historical Dutch uh, text corpora. And we're going to apply this novelty method uh, on both our cases and uh, uh, then look at the specific historical actors. and. Um, because this talk is a bit about the method, we're going to sort of walk through what we did with our method to show you the, uh, the challenges and opportunities of this method uh, um, uh, to apply in your own research. Um, yes, uh, we'll first uh, talk a bit about the two uh, corpora we're using. Uh, whenever I'm talking, I'm talking about chronicles. Whenever Ruben is talking, he's talking about uh, parliamentary debates. Um, my corpus, uh, it's the corpus I'm studying in my uh, PhD project, and it consists of um, early modern Dutch chronicles. And a chronicle is a chronologically structured text in which a person, often a man, uh, reports on everything that is uh, important or relevant to him. Um, and um, that can be uh, about a lot of things, but there are certain topics that are um, always there in, these, uh, in this genre of chronicles. And that's, for example, they write a lot about the weather, uh, about uh, political um, uh, updates, about uh, crime and justice, about uh, economic information, like what's the, the, the prices of uh, food products, um, and, well, some other. Um, we have a corpus uh, that we created in the context of the project I'm working, which is called Chronicling Novelty, New Knowledge in the Netherlands, which consists of uh, about 300 and something uh, chronicles from the period between 1500 and 8060, and um, which covers the period, uh, sorry, the region of the northern and the southern Netherlands, which is nowadays uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, these uh, chronicles were scanned and transcribed and annotated using uh, HDR software uh, Transcribus, and we also made use of a lot of, uh, well, the work of a lot of volunteers um, who, uh, who helped us with that. And uh, I mentioned the annotations of these chronicles because they're important uh, for me in this uh, research because these uh, volunteers also annotated the date uh, in chronicles, so often the chronicler writes like, okay, this date, today, this and this and this happened. Um, and that's an important uh, tag, and I'll come back to that later. Um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, and uh, from uh, Ali's early modern chronicles, uh, uh, instead of that, I use uh, uh, modern uh, parliamentary debates from the 20th century. And uh, the data set I use for this paper is uh, uh, the first uh, uh, 20 years the post-war period, and I use uh, lower house uh, uh, speeches. Um, and it's, it's really interesting source because it's basically transcription of parliamentary speeches, but they're also heavily edited. Um, and they also come with uh, metadata on party speakers and roles, uh, which is also very interesting from a novelty perspective. Um, so to sum it up quantitatively, these are the numbers for our uh, corpora. Uh, so my corpus is, is, is fairly big compared to Ali's corpus, but Ali's corpus runs for uh, almost uh, 400 years, uh, whereas my corpus runs for only 20 years. Um, and uh, uh, in Parliament there are, I think, a lot more actors than in the, in the Chronicles. So, continue to the methodology. Uh, yeah, we, re we uh, use uh, the following uh, methodological pipeline, uh, which is more or less the same for my corpus and your corpus, uh, except the first step uh, applies especially to the Chronicles. Like I said, 
Chronicle is just, well, one manuscript in which a certain period is described and where we have all these date tags. Um, I use these date tags as a position in a text to chunk the Chronicle into smaller segments and every text segment can then be connected to this particular date. And in that sense, I create from one Chronicle a collection of text fragments that each has their own uh, timestamp. And in your case, it's a bit different because we already have these uh, separate fragments, which are speeches, basically, that are uh, connected to a specific date. Uh, we then uh, create document representations, and we use a top-to-vec model for that. So we both trained our own top-to-vec model on our corpus. And this is a method that um, uh, creates both document representations and uh, topics. Uh, so there's a multi-dimensional uh, space in which both the documents and the words are plotted. And what you get then is clusters of words, which are the topics, and you get your documents, with have, which have a certain cosine similarity towards every topic. Um, we use these document embeddings uh, to uh, compute novelty, and we first have to change them into probability distributions. We use a softmax function, function for that. And then we compute novelty. Uh, Ruben already said a little bit about that. Novelty of a text is its reliable difference from the past text. And this is applied to a certain window, and you can choose the size of that window. We chose a, um, a size of 30, and this means that one text is compared to the, 30, uh, to the text of the 30 dates before this day, including the day itself, which means that if an author uh, writes or speaks more times on one day, it's also compared to, uh, to these te text fragments. Uh, so a, if, a new text, if, if a new text is, so to say, introduced, which is not uh, like the, text, the 30 texts before, there's an increase in novelty and afterwards there is going to be a decrease in novelty. So uh, an, 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 a change in the novelty signal uh, would say something about a, uh, a, a change in surprise, so to say. Uh, we use the Jensen-Shannon divergence. We prefer that over the Kubak-Leibner divergence because it has a symmetric nature. And by using, when we plot the novelty signal, we use a nonlinear adaptive filter for smoothing the signal. Um, if we go to the results, we first want to quickly show the novelty signal of the corpus as a whole. This is not what we are particularly interested in, but just for comparison, it's maybe good to see. This was also the result of earlier research I did. Uh, when I take all the text fragments of all the authors together, I get this uh, signal, and you can see very clearly that there are three moments in which this uh, signal is peaking. Uh, which means there is a change, there is, there is novelty within the corpus, and they coincide basically with three moments of uncertainty in uh, the Dutch, in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, 1568 is the beginning of the Dutch revolt. 16, 1668 is when uh, the French are uh, invading the southern Netherlands, and the period at the end of the 18th century is also a period of great unrest in the northern Netherlands with the patriotic movement and also the beginning of the Batavian Republic. Um, that's a general uh, signal, but of course we're interested in more uh, details on the actor level. But first to this signal. Yes, so uh, my signal looks a bit different, of course, because it's a much smaller time period, but uh, uh, as you can see, the novelty signal uh, in Parliament in the post war period uh, first rises, uh, has to do with the sort of ex expansion of government tasks uh, shortly after the war. Um, and then it shows a sort of a gradual decline. And after submitting the abstract, I ran this on uh, a longer time period, and you can see that novelty actually sort of continuously decreases, with the exception of some peaks in the late 1950s and 1960s. And I think it has to do with some more party political conflict uh, during that period. Uh, and the, sh the peak at the end has to do with the way uh, the Jensen Shannon divergence has been calculated. Um, and there's also, in some instances, uh, surprising. Uh, 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 breaking points when cabinets change, and those are the uh, uh, vertical lines. Um, so again, this is the uh, overall trend uh, uh, in novelty for um, uh, the Parliament Corpus. And now we go back to the Chronicles. Uh, yes, so uh, like we said, we're interested in this novelty on the level of the individual actor. So how novel is uh, the writing of one author compared to, to what he or she was writing or saying before. 
Um, well, I could choose many uh, chroniclers, but I choose uh, two. On the left, uh, you see the novelty signal in orange uh, of Albert Peterson Lauen. He was a, uh, a man from Purmerend, which is a very small village above um, Amsterdam, who wrote a chronicle in the uh, 18th century. And uh, you see very clearly that there are some peaks of novelty in uh, this signal. And the dashed line is the uh, average signal of the whole corpus. Um, and uh, when you compare it to the novelty signal of the chronicle, the cl chronicler on the right, who is Liewe Jans de Jong, uh, sorry for these weird names, from Poppenhuizen, which is an even smaller village which, which doesn't exist anymore in, uh, I think, I believe in the province of Friesland, in the north of the Netherlands. Um, and his uh, novelty line is more or less a flat line. It's much uh, lower than uh, the one on the left. So we'd expect that there's, uh, well, it shows there is way less uh, novelty in his chronicle than in the one on the left. And before we go into detail why that is the case, you still have to listen to the Parliament uh, insights. Yeah, so for the Parliament, again, two different actors. Uh, one on the left uh, who has a, 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 a quite a high novelty uh, compared to the, uh, the blue line, which is the general novelty trend. Um, that's uh, Anton Lucas. Uh, they're both very boring uh, 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 Protestant and Catholic members of parliament. Um, and to the left, uh, you can see uh, a member who is uh, generally below the no general novelty trend. Um, and both show considerable peaks, and uh, I will come back to that later. Um, uh, but this is already interesting because most of the sort of uh, persons that operate sort of above the general novelty line are not the persons you would expect. This Anton Lucas is a very boring financial specialist in parliament. And uh, the persons that are known in history uh, uh, for their grand rhetoric uh, do not appear as very novel. So that's already interesting. Um, to interpret these uh, signals, uh, I want to first uh, uh, note that uh, this interpretation, of course, completely depends on, well, what your kind of corpus is, what are the questions you want to answer, what, uh, in what context did this corpus uh, come to being, etc., etc. So we're now going a bit different directions, um, which also uh, shows you, I think, the uh, variety of, um, um, of methods you can use to, uh, to get a better understanding of this, uh, of this method. Um, so, again, back to the Chronicle of um, Lauen from Purmerend. Sorry, um, the dashed line is again uh, the novelty signal, which with the few uh, peaks, and uh, every dot, every point in this scatter plot refers to a fragment of his chronicle, uh, and they're put on a timeline. The color of each dot refers to the topic category. Uh, to which uh, this um, fragment is most similar, uh, because on the, on the left uh, y-axis you see the cosine similarity. Um, what you see is when there is a change in the novelty signal, there's basically an introduction of a new color, a new topic, a new theme. Um, I'll point out a few of them. Uh, you see around 7074 on top of my head, uh, if I'm not speaking the truth, my co-supervisor will correct me uh, in the Q&A session because she knows uh, a lot about this guy. Um, there is like this blue line of blue dots um, and uh, which relates to the topic public celebrations and festivities and it is in this year that the stadtholder Willem V, Willem v visits Permarent. And I think there were uh, back then, I don't know, 600 people living in Permarent, uh, 6,000. 2000, well, still not much. Um, it's okay, it's a city at city rights, that's very important for them. Um, but it's a, it's a big event that this uh, stadtholder is coming by, and for this chronicler, it's reason to uh, devote many pages to this event. Uh, you also see this kind of vertical line with um, uh, orange dots around uh, 7078, I believe, 7077. Uh, which uh, coincides with um, uh, a few disasters happening around Purmerend. There is the explosion in a powder mill, and there's also a dike breach. Um, and then the period around uh, 1788, which is green, uh, referring to the civic life, means there's, well, there's, there's political upheaval, which also results in 
a lot going on in the well in the in the in the city uh, relating to uh, social to institutions uh, in Bloemrent. Um, when we go to the other chronicler uh, with the novelty flatline, you basically see one big cloud of uh, dots in just a few colors. And the topic that is dominating here is weather and climate. And the light green refers to life events and social interactions. This uh, is a farmer uh, from this small village in Friesland who uh, mainly writes about the weather. And when he doesn't write about the weather, he writes about the birthdays of his children. And since he has 14 children, there are a lot of birthdays in 30 years. Um, so you can see that this chronicle is basically it's a text that doesn't change over the time that he's writing. There are no big events that he's influenced by. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very stable text, while the other one is, is changing uh, depending on what's happening in his surroundings. Yeah, so Ali uh, uh, went to the, the actual level immediately, and what I'm interested in uh, in my dissertation is what is sort of causing the rupture in the overall declining trend in novelty. Um, so what I did, I ran a very basic uh, 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 detection algorithm that detects moments of steep increase in novelty. Uh, and it's a very crude algorithm, so you can see the first three moments are basically part of a big trend. Um, uh, but I f I'll focus on the fourth trend, so the, like the red dotted line indicates a period of steep increase. Um, and in that period I look at the pointwise Jensen-Shannon divergences. So this formula of calculating novelty is basically an aggregation of individual differences between a topic in uh, a period one and topic in period two. And you can also look at the individual differences between the topics. And if you then take these differences and make a, like a time series, uh, you can identify the ones which are increasing, the topics that are increasing in novelty. And, and they are likely to contribute to this general trend of, of novelty increase. So these are the, is the distribution of slopes of whether the topic is increasing or decreasing. And you can see that there is a small number of topics that are is sharply increasing in that period. And I think that this is sort of causing or driving the general novelty uh, increase. Um, and these topics are quite specific. Uh, and by then taking the uh, novelty uh, uh, counts, uh, sorry, the novelty scores for every speech in that topic and every actor, you can sort of go back from this very general trend to the actor level. Uh, and this, this results in, in, in uh, uh, some yeah, almost forgotten events in parliamentary history, also because they were, again, very boring, um, uh, that drive this novelty signal. So there was a big reform in uh, medicine law uh, 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 driven by a couple of persons. Uh, there's also a reform in taxation law. And there's uh, uh, an affair uh, related to helmets of the Dutch military because they turned out to be plastic instead of metal. So the Dutch military was also notoriously bad by then. Um, uh, and these kinds of events drive this novelty increase in this uh, very short period. And uh, again, these topics are then related to specific uh, actors in parliament. So in this way, we can sort of go back from this very general signal to the level of individual, top individual topics and individual actors. Okay, so what can we conclude? First of all, the uh, method of using novelty enables us to quantify the degree of historical change. In my case, I can look for historical change at uh, nice colored clouds of topic distributions, but uh, this helps me to quant actually give a number to this uh, change. And we can also differentiate between the general trend in the corpus and the actor level trend and see how, um, well, how, they, how the two uh, relate or not relate to each other. And then the question is of this whole uh, talk, what makes then an actor innovative? In the case of the chronicles, uh, it's clear that events in the surrounding of a chronicler, also together with his or her profession, determines uh, the uh, innovativeness of their writing. Um, and I illustrated that by these two chroniclers in which the one is very much influenced and also interested in what's happening in his, or in his surroundings, while the other uh, is based in a uh, maybe more remote region uh, and uh, the weather and uh, birthdays and uh, weekly visits to uh, relatives are, uh, well, what is important to them, uh, which results in a more um, stable um, chronicle, basically. Yeah, and in the case of uh, parliamentary novelty, you can see that most of this novelty comes from very specific debates and specific actors. So 
it's not like uh, uh, the grand uh, uh, masters of the parliament, uh, the, the, the leaders of the political parties are driving this novelty signal, but it's mostly coming from specialists. So you can see how this novelty signal is basically constrained by procedures and roles in parliament. Um, and that leads to, for me at least, for new questions about uh, 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 structure and agency in, in, in parliamentary history. Uh, uh, but also, uh, by using this method, you can actually put a number on these questions. So that's, that's I think, a very fruitful way to study historical language change. And that's where we end. Thank you so much. Thank you.